this will be a really in, uh, intimate talk, so I hope you'll give me a lot of interaction. We'll talk about, about e-commerce on Sitecore, uh, specifically uh, e-commerce, how that's done. Uh, how many of you are developers? You're developers? You're more on the business side? I have been a developer. Once. So, you've seen code. <laughs> you, you know enough to be dangerous. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. I can go through <laughs> You know what, um, I, ha I had a couple of code demos, but uh, we'll see, we'll do one or two, but I'll probably scale that up, uh, down a little bit and, and spend a little more time demoing the product. Would that be okay? Good. So, um, the title, we talked about that. Um, I sent in the abstract for this, but I f neglected, neglected to actually add a title. So uh, then it became e-commerce best development practice. Uh, in the program, it became deployment practice. So it sounds really boring, but it's going to be awesome. I promise. And if it's not, please raise your hand and say it's not awesome, and we'll, uh, I'll, I'll accommodate you. We're talking about three things today. Maybe, if this works. It does when I turn it on. Um, and I figured doing sort of an in-depth type thing, um, it'll, it'll get there. It would, would not make sense when you don't, do you know e-commerce already? Have you taken a look at it? Not at all, right? That, that was what I was expecting. So, so we're going to do three things once this actually shows up. And updates, it's updating on my screen. That's better. So I'm going to do the, uh, the intro to e-commerce, just tell you what we're trying to do with the platform, um, how it works, things like that. And um, then we're going into a little more sort of developer uh, thing. The idea is to sort of shed some light on how we build it, uh, the practices that we use that will then sort of reflect the, on the way that you go about developing with it. And finally, we're going to talk about connected commerce. So basically, we're talking about the two, the two pillars of, of e-commerce, the sales website itself and the integration options with other line of business systems. So you sort of get, the idea was to give you an end-to-end -end idea of, of how you can build e-commerce with e-commerce and Sitecore. Make sense? Good. So uh, before we do that, let me introduce myself. I'm Soren. I'm the founder of e-commerce. Um, I'm a, I have a little confession to make. I'm a Sitecore noob. I've uh, worked with Sitecore for, uh, for a year now, and that was basically when we started doing, talking about the integration, investigating Sitecore, and, uh, and until we actually, until now, right? So um, by no means am I a Sitecore expert, but um, I have spent um, all of my career in e-commerce, and I guess that's sort of the combination you want. So uh, 12 years in e-commerce, and uh, e-commerce is basically all of that experience packaged into an e-commerce platform, and, um, and we, are, we are a product company today. So it started out in the, in the garage, uh, like all good things does, like Sitecore did, incident, incidentally, right? And uh, now it is actually a full-blown uh, product company with a development department, marketing, sales, all that good stuff. Um, let's take a look at what e-commerce is. So e-commerce is, um, is this. It's a bunch of foundations. It's basically subsystems of the platform. So we view uh, e-commerce as a series of problems we need to solve independently. So almost like when you try and split up a piece of code into multiple components, we just take it up to the system level instead. So e-commerce is, um, what we've done is we've, we've implemented a full product information management system. So you've seen models where Sitecore try, where you try and store products inside Sitecore as items. You've seen the pros and the cons of that. We felt like we wanted to build sort of a best of breed e-commerce platform that was tailored for e-commerce. We wouldn't try and shoehorn e-commerce and products into Sitecore. We wanted something that was actually specifically made for that. And that's the PIM for the catalog side of things. On top of that, we have been able to add the catalog foundation, which is basically a, a way to take all, the, all of those products and slice and dice them into different product ranges. So I guess what we see in Denmark uh, and in Scandinavia is that it's very common to do international sales because our home markets are so small that you almost can't build a business in one of them, right? We're just 5 million people in Denmark, so really tiny people there. So we have to go to Sweden and Norway and the UK and Germany to actually have a bigger market to work with. And I guess probably you're seeing some of the same things. Bigger home market, definitely. But probably I think the international aspect is, is more common here too. Catalog management is a way to take those products that you're selling and only expose a subset of them in the different markets that you're selling in. Also to do individualized catalogs. So if I log in, for example, I could get my own tailored catalog. Multi-channel. So you can think of that as a way to do multiple stores in, uh, in Sitecore. So it's like doing multiple sites in Sitecore, but just extend it to stores instead. So you can have multiple sales channels in there. So you have a US-based cha sales channel, 
a European one, a one for China. You set up that, different looks and feels, different business rules, different payment options, different everything basically. Uh, web content management, sorry. Oh, web content management, the idea there is um, e-commerce was built on the premise that the CMS has to be there. So basically, um, for e-commerce to work, there has to be a CMS. So, yeah, either Sitecore or something else. With that um, assumption, we could actually go and leverage a lot of things from the CMS directly in e-commerce. So you'll see e uh, Sitecore brought into e-commerce, and you'll see e-commerce brought into Sitecore. So the integrations actually go two ways. Uh, what it means is that in our PIM, uh, of course, we can store uh, hard facts like numbers and measures and prices and all that. But you can also tie in catalogs, uh, or catalogs content and things like that. So you get sort of a nice cross mix of content and products, which is really where you want to be today with content marketing being so important in, uh, in e-commerce. We do social commerce as well. It's basically a way to create, create engagements. Ours is a little more down to earth than DMS. Uh, the idea is basically to get people to place reviews and ratings and things like that. And, um, and by, by that mechanism, create some engagement. Um, order management, basically all the workflows required around once you capture the order to process it, to do payments, to refund payments, um, all, all of the workflow there, basically. Um, marketing, so this is actually interesting because uh, Sitecore and e-commerce works in tandem here. DMS and presentation from Sitecore to do the um, sort of the, the softer part of the marketing and marketing foundation from e-commerce to do the, um, to actually make good on the promises that DMS makes, if you will. So whenever you promise a, a, an offer, Marketing Foundation will actually go and reduce prices and things like that based on the rules that you set up. It's very similar in, in, uh, in the way it works to DMS in that it's a, about evaluating some rules and triggering some results based on that. And when you think about the rule set, it's on Sitecore, pretty, pretty similar. Uh, integration, we're going to talk about that, uh, specifically about the, uh, the product we have called uConnector, so basically a, a server that you put into place between Sitecore and uCommerce and your backend systems. So you may have some logistics that you need to deal with in a WMS system, ERP, CRM, all that, and uConnector is, is a way to, it's like a biz talk but done for e-commerce uh, e instead. And finally, search. Um, so uCommerce is a CMS agnostic platform by, by design. So um, we have to carry around some features that we feel are necessary for e-commerce to be awesome. And search is a good example of where the CMSs actually differ quite a lot in, in what it, they can do. So Sitecore has an awesome search engine today, but we need some more uh, stuff from it. So e-commerce search uh, tend to be a little more dynamic in nature than, uh, than content search. If you're looking at a, at a facet, for example, which is a price, well, it's not just a price. It is the price for you right now at this given point in time in your currency uh, and in your format and things like that. So we we have to deal a little more with dynamic facets than just facets that are extrapolated from the content, if that makes sense. Of course, we have to deal with the other type as well. Does all that make sense? Any questions for that? Good. We don't deal in... Uh, Oh, um, do we have standard integrations with uh, ERP systems? Uh, nope, such a thing does not exist. If people say they have it, it's a lie. <laughs> the reason for that is that the backend uh, of the ERP, while it is a standard uh, system, it is usually heavily customized. So the meaning of fields and placement of, of data will typically vary from system to system. If you think about Sitecore, the same thing is true. You don't know what the data model is in Sitecore. Um, so connecting those two via standard integration is, is impossible. So you have, to, you have to get a coder in there and do your maps or something like that. Uconnector is based on the, the premise that uh, you can reuse some things, but not all things. I'm going to show you how that works. So if you want to integrate with you use the Uconnector? Yes, you will create a, an integration with the proper adapters that will be able to speak with the systems in play on either side of the equation. Yeah. So you may ask, where, with all the things that I've talked about, what's the secret sauce there? Because uh, many of the features that, uh, that you saw are available in other platforms, like Magento or whatever. So why use WooCommerce? And of course, you should use WooCommerce because it integrates so nicely into Sitecore. When we integrate with the CMS, what we do is we look at it at two levels. We integrate our own native management tools in there. So all of the things that you've seen before, an iframe running inside the desktop, right? You've seen that a million times. Have you tried Insight at some point? Yes. They have an iframe too. <laughs> Ours is not uh, Flash though, so uh, it is actually .NET all the way through. So just 
to put your mind at ease. But that's the, that's, that's the first level of integration. That's the least we can do to make e-commerce work inside Sitecore. The next level is to look at all the services that the CMS exposes and then leverage those, DMS, search, content editors, all that good stuff. And of course we go and leverage that too. So uh, it's demo time and uh, we'll see how this goes. So I'm going to spend a little more time in this demo than I originally envisioned, um, simply because I want to give you a, a deeper feel of what, what's what. And let's see, time is good. All right. Um, yes. So let me start out here. Hope the internet works. So what we're looking at here is Avenue Clothing. This is our uh, Office Core, our Jetstream, our Nikam, God forbid. <laughs> um, this is our demo site, done inside core uh, using uh, user controls. The idea is not to create a site that you can take and build on top of it. That was not our initial intention. Although what we are seeing partners do today is that they take Avenue Clothing and then they build a site on top of it, which was really not what we wanted. Uh, but it's meant more as a supplement to the documentation we have. So living documentation, you download the code, you can see how all the APIs click together, you can get a sense of how all the basic stuff works. It's by no means uh, a way to expose all of the capabilities of e-commerce. Multi-store, for example, is not part of this. Multi-language is not part of this uh, in any sort of meaningful way. Uh, it's just to give you a starting point so you don't have to go and re re reinvent everything. What is is based on MVC web forms. It's based on web forms today. Um, when we move into a new CMS ecosystem, what we do is we go and talk to a bunch of partners because we don't know. And what we sort of uniformly heard from them was that uh, web forms is the prevalent way of building sites in Sitecore today. MVC is there, but it's not quite there. That was a year ago. In that time frame, I've talked with maybe 200 other Sitecore partners, and I, I will say this: MVC is gaining a lot of traction. So uh, the next version of Avenue Clone and will probably be based on MVC. For me as a developer, um, I feel like it's the right way to go, definitely. Um, so Avenue Clothing here, um, it has the things that you would expect, uh, catalog navigation, a little bit of faceted search so you get a sense of how that would work. Um, uh, JavaScript API so you can add to basket, all that. So things that you absolutely have to have in an e-commerce solution today. You. You can do a server-side uh, behavior around everything if you want to, but that's not the paradigm that you see in e-commerce stores today. You, will, you want the client-side interaction. So we have examples of that. We have a little bit of predictive search, so we can see how that would work. The full checkout flow as well. Once you go through this, you can, of course, uh, edit. You can see a little bit of discounting in play here. Um, you can add promo codes. You can do some of the basic discounting scenarios. And once you add in um, uh, payment methods like Ogon or Ideal or whatever, uh, credit card authorization, debit cards, all that will just work as part of this. All of our payment providers use the um, uh, customer redirect model. So customers are always redirected to the payment gateway pages. The reason for that is we want to ensure that you don't have to go and fulfill PCI requirements. Um, so it's created like that because that's sort of the norm over here at least. In the US, they're not so happy about the model, but I guess I see you nodding along, so, uh, so I expect um, it makes sense here too. Um, let's see if I can uh, fill this out and get a move on here. Um, check out all that. All of the presentation here is handled by Sitecore. WooCommerce has absolutely zero requirements for your IA. All of your content notes, all of your templates, everything can look exactly like you want. That means that WooCommerce can be plugged into an existing solution rather easily because you just install it, you figure out where you want your store, and you're good to go. Make sense? And that also means that checkout can be one page, it can be 20 pages, I wouldn't advise it, but it can be done. Um, so everything here is created in exactly the same way that you're used to. Um, let's try and log into Sitecore so you can see what's, what's what there. So um, these are the two levels that I talked about. Here's the, uh, the iframe, and of course we're using all of the other stuff here as well. So let's go through that. 
So UCommerce, the backend here, exposes all of the foundations, all of the subsystems. Uh, we don't uh, suffix them with experience or anything like that, but maybe we should call it an, an e-commerce experience platform or something like that. It seems like it's, uh, it's the way to go today. Um, <laughs> uh, it's just an e-commerce platform, nothing fancy about that. We can, uh, we can make your website sell shit. That's basically what we do, right? Uh, at the top level here, you have your stores. So each store for each region that you want to address, you can use them for other purposes as well. You can do, um, we have an interesting thing around company Christmas presents in Denmark. It's very common uh, for company, well, there's a type of company that sells the, these types of Christmas presents to companies, but they want uh, employees to be able to select the cr uh, Christmas gift, if that makes sense. So e-commerce would offer uh, our employees a Christmas gift, uh, but we would do it through a branded store with our look and feel and with some products that are selected for the employees on, be uh, on beforehand, so we can only sort of may maybe select between five or ten products, something like that. And that's, that would be a way to use multi-store here for a very basic scenario, have a, a, a branded experience. The more common thing is like this, where you have a a site for the US, one for Singapore, one for Europe, things like that. Underneath that you have your catalogs. You can see here our multilingual model. Um, so when you create more uh, languages in Sitecore, UCommerce will pick that up. We will add multilingual uh, information to our data models where appropriate. Um, price lists associated to catalogs, so you can have multiple price lists set up. Different ca currencies, different tax rates, different pricing strategies. Um, so again, very commonly used for multi-currency scenarios, but can be used for B2B as well if you want to support something like differentiated pricing where different customers have pre-negotiated some contracts and they get different unit, level, uh, unit prices on, I don't know, nuts and bolts or whatever. Next level, category level. And you can see here one of the, the, the ways that e-commerce is different from Sitecore is the way that we think about UIs. We do not try and force every concept in e-commerce into one UI paradigm. Rather, we create UIs that match the specific uh, task at hand. So we do lists, we do sorting, we do filtering, and the UIs will look completely different depending on which type of workflow we're trying to uh, satisfy here. When we're looking at a product, we have a, a new concept you need to learn if you want to go down this route. It's called a definition. You can equate a definition with a template in Sitecore. Same basic concept, but a definition is for, for e-commerce instead. So it'll have the ability to add a product uh, field to uh, facet to search, for example, to make it a variant property, to do all the things that you would expect from e-commerce. Um, interestingly, when we had to map this to Sitecore, uh, there was a huge amount of overlap between what we were doing and what Sitecore was already doing. Independently, our two teams have come up, well, I guess Sitecore has multiple, we just have the one. But the two teams had come up with, uh, with a lot of analog technical solutions to the same problems, as you're going to see in a little bit. Definitions are just our version of templates, works exactly the same. We can do reviews, related products, we can do composite products as well, so if you need to do configurable products like a laptop like I have here, you could actually go and, and create a virtual product that is made up of a bunch of other items in the catalog. So you'd have your hard drive, you'd have your RAM, your displays and all that, link that up into a virtual product and those linked products would be options on a front end. Imagine that in a Razer context, it's actually really easy to create the UI for that. Any questions? Make sense? Good. Order management. So basically, how are they stored in Sitecore? How are items stored in Sitecore? Now, we have a bunch of products that the, those virtual products. They are also an item. Okay. A new type of item. But the thing is, while our products are in Sitecore, they're not actually Sitecore items. Um, they, uh, they just. Well, I'll, I'll show you how that works in a little bit. It's a data it is a data source. Yes. So uh, actually, let me show you that right now, so you can uh, sort of see what I'm talking about. So this is that next level. So when we move into the content editor, so this is our default. We know we can always do this type of integration with any CMS. So of course we go there first, but then we go and talk, talk with partners, as I mentioned, and ask them, what do you expect from a from a e-commerce for site core integration? And what we heard there universally as well was, you have to support DMS. If you don't, you basically have no product. Do you agree with that statement? So that's why we went and created this, a data provider that exposes all of the information that we just saw in e-commerce at runtime, well at, at request time I guess, um, 
so you can go and edit products here as well. The reason we did it, of course, was not to go and, and enable Sitecore editors for e-commerce products because we already have a perfectly fine editor that's actually tailor-made for editing products. Um, the reason was that little button up here. So with that, you can go and use uh, catalog items from e-commerce in exactly the same way as you can use content items. The, uh, did any of you uh, attend the OBEC talk? No? Okay. Um, Sitecore is doing the OBEC thing. I guess it's public now, so now I can, now, now I can talk about it. Uh, and one of the pieces of OBEC is to bring in catalog items into Sitecore. Um, we, incidentally, we didn't agree with that model, so we're actually using something else to do it. We're using the data provider which lies underneath OBEC. The reason was we had to create this integration before there was a thing called OBEC. There was only basically a Word document called OBEC, which is really hard to code against. Not impossible, but really hard. So we went with the data provider framework, and I think I'm pretty happy with that because it, it also enables us to do uh, search, for example. All of our items are available there, as you would expect. Um, the reason Sitecore knows all this stuff is that our definitions are translated into to templates because everything is an item in Sitecore. Really powerful thought and a really impressive thought also. It shows a lot of foresight uh, that the, the architects of Sitecore were able to come up with that. But you can see here, e-commerce definitions. Didn't show you them on the e-commerce side, but these are basically our definitions with our custom fields because the two concepts are so uncannily close to each other. We could basically just map it over and be done with it. And now Sitecore knows all about e-commerce. It's really cool. It also means that uh, when time comes to do presentation, for example, we have standard values. Is this bi big enough for you? <laughs> um, so you can go and assign layouts and all that that you would expect like a Sitecore item because now from a Sitecore perspective, it is a Sitecore item. Only it, it doesn't live in Sitecore. It lives in, in e-commerce always, never in Sitecore. Uh, only the things that Sitecore adds on top of it, like DMS configuration and templates and all that, that will still live in Sitecore. M make sense? Any questions? Tell a bit more about, you said that um, OBEC uses a different integration approach. Yes. Which you don't really agree with. Can you, can you elaborate a bit on, yes. what the um, on why you don't agree with it? Yes. Yeah, so, so uh, why didn't we use OBEC? Why do I not agree with that model? And which model is it? So the model, okay, so the core problem is that creating these data providers is not trivial. In fact, it's crazy difficult. Um, we got the prototype for this up and running in two days. We are really happy. I was sort of like, yeah, you know, the, uh, the quintessential product owner. It was just, yeah, we're almost there. We can, we can almost ship this thing. And then three months later, we had an awesome data provider. Because the thing is, the devil is in the detail when you're doing data providers. And that's what people have found out over the years. So creating a data, data provider is very, very difficult. At least one that's both read, read and write and all that. So OBEC came up with a different approach to the problem. They said, well, Sitecore already have a perfect, perfectly working data provider, the native Sitecore one. So rather than try and create a data provider, why not import all of these items into Sitecore and let Sitecore own them? And that's the, that's the OBEC model. Now, the problem is both Sitecore and the e-commerce platform needs to know those two, that, that data, because everything revolves around catalog and content in both worlds, right? So what you end up with is a redundant model where you have some changes going on over here, some changes going on over there, and um, at the end of the day, the users of this system will be very confused because it is just a matter of time uh, until these two models come out of sync. And you see one view of the world over here and another view of the world over there, and which one is actually the right view? We don't know. We don't know. So what we've done is we've taken those two worlds and said there is just one world, and we then, for e-commerce, expose one view of that world and to Sitecore another view of that world. So it is a, a more elegant solution. Incidentally, the commerce server guys have gone down exactly the same route independently of us. So, um, um, nope, because OBEC is two things. Well, it's many things, but it's, it's catalog, and next version that will be released soon is about uh, the APIs that are used and engagement plans and all that. And we can absolutely pick and choose the, the things that we want, and in fact, that's exactly what we're doing. Oh, and I've been talking too much. My screensaver kicked in. Sorry about that. Any other questions? Does that answer the question all right? Good. Any other questions? The session is after your presentation. So, okay. It hasn't been done yet. 
So that's why you haven't heard about it. You heard it here first, people. <laughs> we'll go there and ask him this yeah, let's go. Let's go and harass him a little bit. No, we'll, we'll be we'll be nice. Um, <laughs> So that's that's the reason. So you get the best of both worlds, basically, with with a data provider. We have sort of taken it upon us to deal with that complexity, the testing, the QA, all that, that that's required to make it work properly, because we don't want our customers or developers actually having to deal with that on a day-to-day -day basis. We rather solve this problem once and never have to deal with it again. So that's the that's the reason. Good. So that's the side core side of things. So basically, you can do everything you want to do with uh, you can do with the content item, you can do with the catalog items. That, that's the main point here. Let me show you uh, some more stuff here. So uh, order management is an interesting uh, area because usually an ERP backend system will deal with it. But we've found some situations where order management is necessary on the front end. It might be if you have customer service representatives that need to answer the phone, deal with customer service re uh, requests. You might not want an 18-year-old sitting around in your ERP system screwing around with customer data or something like that, right? So. Uh, we move that into the front end, so you can do some of these th things there. And also, in some cases, the IT infrastructure that companies have out there are not mature. Well, they're, they're very mature, but they're mature and targeted for something else. So think about a big distributor of, uh, of uh, foodstuffs, for example. Um, they will be geared towards delivering large quantities of product into their retail channel uh, on a bi-weekly basis, for example. They will not be geared to me ordering a, a liter of milk because they basically don't know how to deal with that one-to-one -one relationship. And th in those cases, it can actually be helpful to have these tools available as well. What you can do here is you can place new orders, as you would expect. So if you have a client or a uh, customer on the phone, you can go and place a new order. You can go and edit that order once you're done. You can go and add stuff, remove stuff, change things up, add custom discounts, do shipping, all the things that you would expect um, in a system like this. So let's add some order lines here. Just add a bunch so we have a little bit to work with, like that. And with that, I can go and change quantities. I can go and screw around with this uh, to my heart's content. I can go and do multi shipping. So, say I'm a customer that needs some pieces of uh, items shipped to one location or another, go and create a second shipment as, it, as I just did, and then move my items that I want shipped to a different location to that. Easy peasy. And of course, we do audit trails and payments and all that on top of that, so uh, everything is nice and tidy. All this is controlled by a workflow that's configurable, <coughs> configurable, so all these states that you see here can be changed so they match uh, with whatever workflow uh, your client has. Um, and this is actually an interesting point where uh, there are some, some overlap between what e-commerce does and Sidecore. Go ahead. Um, yeah, customers or of course. All of this is driven by the same API, so every every API that we're using are exposed to you guys too. So you can do all this on the front end as well. Then I come to the next question. I, I think in this kind of scenarios, there's lots of complex rules and, and pricing structures involved. Yes. Is there some area uh -huh. where we can? Yep, indeed there is. Because what I did here is I created a, a new shipment, uh, but what you couldn't see is that underneath the covers, uh, a concept that we invented and we call a pipeline was executed. <laughs> um, we didn't know Sitecore had it until we actually started playing around with Sitecore, but that's another example of that overlap. Um, so you're familiar with Sitecore pipelines, you've probably written a million of them, and you will probably find it really easy to build a e-commerce pipeline. Maybe even easier, because we have the advantage of not being, we don't, we were invented a little later in the .NET life cycle than Sitecore. So we have the advantages of some additional things that make pipelines even more awesome to work with. So let me show you that. Uh, let me find my little tiger here. Um, so first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find uh, the configuration of Sitecore and where e-commerce is installed. And we have a folder called pipelines in there. And you can see here, our pipelines are basically just a file. Each file has a config configuration of what are the steps of this particular pipeline. So let's take a look at the checkout pipeline. So this is what that looks like. So the architecture of e-commerce is uh, driven by inversion of control, dependency injection. I'm going to talk a little bit about, more about that. We have a component, and a component in e-commerce is basically a general thing. 
all of the components in e-commerce are described like this. So a pipeline is just a specialized type of component that has a certain behavior that we want, namely executing from A to Z with a context. Does that sound familiar from a Sitecore point of view? I'm hoping you'll say yes, because it, exa ex it is the exactly the same. The difference here is that um, these here are references to other components in e-commerce that are executed in order. The context is passed sub subsequently between each step. So the order goes in at the top, is passed through each of the steps, mutated in each of the steps, and that probably sounds like something you've done before. Um, and the thing here is that you can see what the context is because it's right there. So you can see it's a purchase order in this case because a pipeline in e-commerce is a generic construct. That means a pipeline can operate on anything. And it means that the context is explicit, which is different from what you know. It also means that unit testing these guys is really simple. It also means that single responsibility principle, uh, a interface segregation principle, all that good stuff from Solid is also fairly easy to, um, to observe. So what you'll see here is that we have Hopefully, you will agree, when you read over these steps here, you'll get a sense of what happens. The pipeline is the checkout pipeline, so it is the pipeline that is executed when a basket converts to an order, so when we have payment in hand. And if you read over those steps there, hopefully, you get a sense of what actually happens. Would you agree with that statement? Good. What it means for you is that these things here become very specialized, which is exactly like what you see in the uh, in Sitecore today. So let me find the assign order number task here. Uh, let me find the right Mission Studio first, which apparently I don't have open. No. Well, it's right there in decompile form instead. So you can see here there's a pipeline interface, so that's like what you do. The context and the code is fairly easy to read. And in fact, it is just those three lines of code that the entire thing is made up of. Uh, one of the things that we've discovered is that when you can get down to a class that describes what it does, it means you're at a good place because it means that it's very focused on doing just one thing, not a ton of things. And what that means for you as consumers of that thing is that you can replace that tiny little piece if you're not happy with it and add another one. Assigning an order number, incidentally, is something that is usually strategy based. It can be very different from site to site how that happens. And that's why we created this particular one. So you can uh, swap that out. Make sense? Good. Ah, let's see, I think, uh, have we run for 45 minutes already? Uh, 32. 32. Let's speed up a little bit. No. Um, so I've already the talked about principles. And uh, the first one I want to talk about is the way that we think about creating software for you guys. We call it framework first. And the idea is to avoid piling features onto the platform. We want to pile features on there, but we want to go about it in a, in a structured way. So what we do is take something like Marketing Foundation, for example, that is all about applying discounts to an order. Which types of discounts could you sort of imagine would be helpful to have? <laughs> Unit level discounts, combination of products, uh, order thresholds, shipping discounts. We could build all those features independently from each other, just add them in, and we'd have a, an, an awesome feature set that we could go and sell to customers. But what we wouldn't have would be an extensible platform. So what we do instead is we sort of figure out what are the features we want from this, and then we don't do any of them. We take a step back, and then we do the framework around it. We figure out what is the core domain around doing discounts. And the core domain, indeed, is what I described at the start of the talk, evaluating some rules and triggering some results. Very basic. You just have to realize what the model is, which is the difficult part. That is what we call framework first. Once we have the framework implemented, we can then go and use the, that core set of rules to implement uh, specific ones. Has the customer bought this particular product? Has the customer bought a, uh, above a certain threshold, a, above a certain amount? And, into, and how does, he, it, does this interact with each other? The cool thing is that we are using the framework in exactly the same way that you guys will be using the framework. So if, if there is a feature in e-commerce you're not happy with, you can replace it. If there's a feature you're missing, 
which there will be. Cli clients have some interesting requirements. I've been taught not to say weird or wacky requirements. It is interesting, okay? So just remember that, really important. Um, and of course you can just go and say, yes, we can implement that, because we'll just do a new rule, we'll just do a new uh, result of this st stuff. That's framework first. Does that make sense? It should be familiar to you, because Sitecore is, is very close to that. This all rests on a principle called solids. Are you all aware of what that means? I guess you guys probably have heard about it. That's Uncle Bob, Robert C. Martin, who uh, he didn't in invent solid, but he pulled it all together. Um, and it, each of the letters stands for sort of a good development practice. And this bleeds through the entire platform of e-commerce. We live and breathe solid every day, and we kick each other in a not so specific place when, uh, when this is not uh, um, observed. This is something we teach at local colleges because we feel like it is so important and we can't. I can't for the life of me figure out why they don't bring it into the curriculum. So we do it outside of the curriculum, bring in interns and things like that to teach them these principles because it is so damned important that they do it. You already saw an example of S, single responsibility principle. Assign order number task, right? I'd say that's a single responsibility, yeah? You also saw an, uh, an example of interface uh, segregation principle, the I, in the, in the fact that we have an I pipeline task. It is only uh, concerned with executing itself, not the framework around it. There's something else called an I pipeline for that. Many more examples of that. Open, close, the O. A pipeline is a perfect example of that. It's closed for modification, but open to extension, which is what we do whenever we add a new pipeline task in there. All this rests on top of another principle called DI, dependency injection. If you were attended the MVC talk, you saw a little bit about this. The basic premise is that it that you click objects together. So you have highly focused objects that you then click together to solve the bigger problem. And that's DI. The entire architecture of e-commerce is built on the top of a dependency injected architecture. Now if you think about that, you can sort of start to see where the flexibility in the platform lies when you combine it with this. When you have a lot of small objects that work together to solve the problem, configured in an inversion of control container like Castle Windsor, you can start to look at the platform like a set of puzzle pieces. That's what I'm trying to illustrate here. Each of the little objects make up the overall tapestry of the platform. And each of the individual pieces can be replaced, changed, modified, whatever. UIs, price calculations, tax calculations, uh, marketing rules, everything is configurable via these little puzzle pieces. And this is where I would code. <laughs> A little uh, puzzle piece, uh, a pipeline task, but um, I don't think we'll make it through it, so um, it'll be, it, it would be really fast, but it would only apply to this segment of the audience, not the other half. <laughs> so, um, so I think we'll skip that. Uh, we're doing a master class in London on uh, Tuesday at Sitecore UK, so if you're interested in learning all this, come there instead. It is very much a developer course, yes. So really uh, into the nitty gritty of doing uh, ORMs and dependency injection and extending new commerce, things like this. I will show you one thing though, um, just to illustrate the point here. We have, oh Jesus, we have a, t a task, uh, which one do I want? I actually want this one here. This is the training uh, code that we use. There's an empty library in here. Because everything observes the, uh, the D as well, the dependency inversion control, where you depend on an interface but not on the actual implementation, it means that you can go and swap out things. And one of the things that is really interesting to swap out is the pricing strategy, right? It can be so different from customer to customer. So what I can do here is I can do my price service. Whoop. With that in place, I can go and implement I price service, like that. And let's just say everything is completely free today because that's just the type of person I am. Uh, price group dot currency. Boom. I've created a new price rule strategy, uh, a new price engine with a new strategy inside it, right? I can now go and register this in e-commerce. 
and let e-commerce know it's there, and this will effectively take over every price calculation in the system uh, for this class here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the core configuration. This is where all of the components of e-commerce are configured. Core for pricing, URLs, all that stuff, tax, even down to the shell. A shell in our parlance is a CMS. So the integration with the CMS is configured using these same principles. So and when we need to go and integrate with another CMS, we swap out this configuration file in with a new, and you can see, sort of see how the underlying principles are working for us there. Now, if I want to override this price service, I just want to open up here, find all the components, find my price service, and the way to do it is to move this registration out of this particular place and into the custom configuration file here, like that. So the service, we don't want to touch that. This is what e-commerce knows about, but we do want to touch this here. So now I can go and say my price service, e-commerce, uh, this will be my library, like that. And now we've taken over every price calculation with it. that class I just created in two minutes. Usually the class will be a little more elaborate. The point is you can do it. And once you can do this, you can do everything where you want with price calculation. Imagine every component working like this because that is the state of affairs. Any questions? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I'm still wondering about uh, rule management because I'm more like a solution architect. Yeah, of rule management around. In, in the for pricing? Administration, you show oh. the technical way to Yes. Oh yeah, room management. <laughs> Sorry about that. I didn't quite get there. Let me show you that. That is all about marketing foundation. This is where you go and set up your campaigns. And uh, what we've done there is we've created campaigns that can be associated with different um, uh, stores and things like that. They can have different time spans that are available. But each of the rules then are configured as campaign items. And that, that's these guys here. They express each type of campaign, uh, discount you want to set up. The model that we use is called AAA, Advertise, Act and Award. The idea with this is basically that you read from left to right and that's the process the store manager would go through. First, the store manager needs to think about when, when and where we want to make the customer aware that we have a discount. So where would, the, where would the information pop up on the site, basically? In this case, it would be whenever this product is displayed. The act column, that is what we want the customer to do. So buy this particular product, buy this particular set of products, have this promo code, things like that. And finally, the award is what's triggered once those rules are satisfied. So this is very similar to, to the rules editor in Sitecore. The idea then is that you can take these targets, as we call them, these are targets, you, we can take them and combine them. So again, because everything is split up into neat and nice little pieces, they can be combined in interesting ways. So why not have two product targets, for example? That's a bundle. Now you have to buy two products to satisfy the, the criteria. Or how about a promo code? That's just another type of rule that needs to be satisfied. Or how about a promo code in combination with one of those product targets from before? Now we have not just a promo code, we have a promo code that's specific to a particular product. And that's what, what Framework First does. It allows us to take a step back and think about the individual little pieces. And that allows further combination of the, of the rules in here. And more complex rules like time frames or CRM segments? They can be added in here. Yeah, they can be added in here. One way to do it is to use a target, a target we call dynamic order property. It ba basically enables you to suck in any order property in the system. So when you have that, you could say segment on order is gold. And once that's set, this would be satisfied. But it doesn't stop there, because when you add new pieces of editor UI here, there's no reason why it couldn't plug into sidecore lists or automation plans or whatever, because it is just rules that need to say yay or nay, and you can do anything in there, right? And how does it scale? Because when I have like an enterprise B2B kind of environment, Thousands and thousands of For B2B, when you have a complex pricing logic, I would say it depends. You sh sometimes I would leave the, that logic in the back-end system because there is so much complexity there that it wouldn't make sense to duplicate it. So that would be a real-time integration rather than a synchronization. If you're working with segments of customers, if they've been able to sort of categorize them a little bit, this scales. Um, but it is more for B2C scenarios where you have more general, exactly. For B2B, where you have your price matrices, maybe you have 
30,000 customers each have their own price per product, you need to go somewhere else. We actually have a customer that, that has created a award, which is a B2B price, they call it. And that actually encapsulates the entire logic around looking up in, syn in, in a huge synchronized uh, database. So you can also be less granular, basically, and that will enable you to scale it too. Precisely. Yes. Uh, you mentioned the U Connect, or yes. Because in my experience, the most difficult part is that these are like commodities almost. Yep. Integration is the challenge. Oh, they're not commodities in Sidecore. Uh, <laughs> but you're right. What about? Oh, yeah. Well, this is actually. No, let's not talk about that. Um, ah, ah. Let's talk about this then because that's the question. There are only two minutes left, so let's talk integration in two minutes and uh, we can take it up outside if you want. Um, basically, this is the situation, both for B2B and B2C. You have a bunch of different systems. Some, all of them have interesting information that might need to be aggregated somewhere so we can do a sale, right? One of the problems that we found with, uh, with our partners, one of the problems that they came to us and said, could you please help with us with that, is that they also found integration extremely difficult to work with. Um, and what they did is, once they succeeded with it, they saw little to no reuse between integrations. They basically had to redo their integrations, even though it was the same system on each side. So we wanted to try and solve that. And what we came up with is this model here. First, we wanted to introduce some terminology so we know what we're talking about. The receive, transform, send model basically has you connector sitting at the middle, it, so it's from its point of view that things are received and sent. You have an adapter that will be able to speak with system X that received data into your U connector. It will then transform that information and then send it again from U connector's point of view to system Y. So it might be your ERP system here. You receive some product information. U connector transforms that into something U commerce might understand, Sidecore might understand. And we use adapters for that. So there will be a e-commerce adapter, there will be an X adapter, a nav adapter, and so on and so forth. They will be configurable things. They're not there yet. Uh, we have tech adapters for FTP and REST and things like that. Um, and we have, I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself. When you have a thing in your platform called a transformer, you have to you have a slide like this, right? But what it, it does exactly what it's told. It turns into a little uh, yellow car and just zips off. No, it, changes data from one format to another, right? And what you end up with is a, situ a situation like this, a hop and spoke architecture where you have you connect sitting in the middle, receiving data from different types of systems and passing it on to other systems. This is where I would do an awesome demo of transforming data and bringing things out. You just have to use your imagination and think how beautiful that would be. Um, <laughs> I can show you real quick what the end result would have been. Um, so you can see how we think about this in code. Um, Yes. We do bundle it with, with e-commerce for Sitecore because integration is so key. Um, but this is the way we think about it. And for me personally, this is beautiful code. What it is, is a, 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 a fluent API where you say it ex expresses that receive, transform, send model. And what it does is basically it says, I wish to receive something from somewhere. In this case, it's a data table from SQL Server. And you can see I'm setting some options, the connection string, the SQL I want to execute, because the adapter is a configurable thing that is reusable across integrations. That's the whole idea with that. I then transform that data table into an Excel stream. So now you can see where, where we're headed with this. We take that stream, turn it into a, a, a file, and then we send that using another adapter to a local file directory. So what, I, what I'm doing in this, in this demo is basically taking good old Northwind, sucking out all of the data, transforming it into Excel, and now I have an Excel spreadsheet with Northwind data in it. Hugely useful, or not. <laughs> but the thing is, I only had to write this thing here that can produce that data table, because that's the only thing I didn't have already. Uh, I had that, this thing here, I had that, and I had that, that's part of your connector, and that's part of that idea of being able to reuse it. What if I needed CSV instead? Well, it just so happens that we have another transformer in here. Can anybody say the, the, the sound they make when they do it? Something like that. And what do you know? Now it produces CSV instead of Excel with that little change. Pretty cool. Well, I think so. <laughs> this is just the API. Uconnector is actually the embodiment of a lot of things that we learned building e-commerce. 
But the name of the game is start all over, apparently. The name of the game. Where did it go? There it is. Is reuse, which is something we don't see a lot of in integration today. And we're done. So I just want to sum up with one slide. E-commerce in, uh, in Sidecar. We, I think we can all agree that there has been some challenges. I know that that's the word we need to use. But I think from here on in, we have a different situation. And it's all rainbows and unicorns. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks for your questions.